In this presentation, we'll be going over classroom routines and strategies when working with English language learners. Our goal is to discuss classroom routines and strategies that help maximize effectiveness when working with English language learners. We'll focus on three components of daily instruction, planning, engagement, and assessment. Let's start with planning. Planning is a crucial step in daily instruction. First, for English language learners, we need to have clear objectives that are presented in student-friendly language. These objectives should be presented in both an oral and written form so that students can refer to the objectives throughout the lesson. Necessary vocabulary must be presented. It's helpful if the vocabulary also comes with illustrations. For an English language learner, illustrations will be very helpful. You need modeling, manipulatives, and demonstrations. We need to have activities that allow for collaboration. Since our English language learners may struggle with certain concepts, we always want to have activities that allow them to work with peers. And we need to have differentiated activities. Not everyone in the classroom is at the same level, so we need to provide differentiated activities so that everyone is able to achieve the goal of the lesson. We have to be clear of what the end goal of the lesson is. And once we're clear of the end goal, we have to be able to figure out if that end goal was met. These are some of the things to focus on when planning. Let's move on to the next component, engagement. In a lesson, it's important to take the time to go over background knowledge. Now, the amount of time that you spend on background knowledge is going to depend on the complexity of the lesson. It doesn't make any sense to go through the lesson if the students don't have the necessary background knowledge. Now, you might spend five minutes on background knowledge, or it may be necessary for you to spend as much as a half hour on background knowledge. It all depends on your students and what you feel is necessary. Short periods of note taking, split notes. Now, when we're talking about split notes, an example that comes to mind are Cornell notes. It's basically where the students split the page. On one side, they write the classroom notes, and on the other side, there's a space where they can have questions, they can classify, they can reflect on the notes. We want to have brainstorming activities that allow for collaboration and peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Using dry erase and whiteboards are an effective way of interacting with the children throughout the lesson. And this is an effective activity that keeps them engaged. Many times for English language learners, they may know certain concepts and may understand the language, but it's very difficult for them to organize the language in order to produce the outcome that we want. So using organizational maps and charts like graphic organizers are an effective way to help them. A classroom lesson needs movement, questioning, and wait time. We don't want children sitting in their seats throughout the whole lesson. Questioning is very important. When questioning, we have to keep in mind that certain students will need probing and certain students will need prompting. Probing is when a student gives you a right answer, but you ask for more. You try to elicit a deeper understanding of a concept because that student was able to answer the question right. Prompting, on the other hand, is when we ask the student a question or we provide them something that leads them towards the right direction. This happens when a student gives us a wrong answer or an incomplete answer. Then we try to prompt or lead them in the right direction. If they still can't get to the right answer, then we either provide the answer or we call on someone else who's able to give the answer. Wait time is crucial. It's important to provide wait time for English language learners as well as any student. We want to allow at least seven seconds after we've posed a question for the student to answer. Now, different methods that can be used after we ask a question, we can ask the student to talk with their peer and discuss their answer before they give it out. Or we can ask them to talk with their peer, write their answer, and then share it out. 
personal dictionaries. This is referring to a dictionary that the student carries around, takes home, uses whenever necessary. This can be a marble notebook in which they write vocabulary and terms that they need. They can translate in this book. They can draw pictures in this book. Whatever they need to be able to make sense of the information in the book. That's a personal dictionary. In most classes, we have word walls. Because we have limited space, the word walls might need to change throughout the year. An effective word wall not only has terms and definitions, but it may also include examples and illustrations. Because you always have to remember that in the absence of language, an illustration is an effective way for the students to connect to a term. Now let's talk about the third component of this presentation. Assessment. It's important to plan your assessment prior to the lesson. Throughout the lesson, we should be assessing the understanding of our students. We need to prepare performance-based as well as written formative assessments. As we all know, formative assessments are done throughout the lesson and they gauge and inform what we will teach or how we may adjust our instruction. Students can be assessed through short projects. Projects that take a few days to a week are an effective way to know what the students have learned and what they're able to put into practice. We should have group as well as individual tasks throughout the lesson. There should always be discussion, discussion among peers and discussions among teacher and students. As the students discuss, the teacher may walk around the classroom and visit different groups. The teacher can join in on the conversation, and in doing so, they'll be able to assess individual student understanding. Exit slips. Exit slips are an effective way of assessing student understanding. This can be short, just before the end of the lesson, you give a question that assesses the understanding. You may ask for feedback on the lesson, whatever you feel is necessary. As educators, we know that there are numerous things that make up an effective environment for teaching students. The three components that we discuss throughout this presentation are important for any student, but they are crucial to English language learners. These are the things that as educators, we need to make sure become an integral part of our daily and weekly instruction.